Today I have a few projects using basket weaving reed that are easy to recreate and here's the materials you will need for the first one. The reed of course, which is linked in my description box, I got that from Amazon. Wood glue, I'm using wood glue super glue from Dollar Tree and then binder clips. We're making a tobacco basket here, which I'm so excited about. I've been wanting to make my own for quite a while now. Before we get started, you wanna find a box or something that's the size and shape you want your basket to be. I'm using a 12 by 12 cube storage bin from mine, which made my basket about 14 by 14 inches. So I start out wrapping the reed around the top of the cube and I wrapped it two times. For the second layer, I added wood glue and the binder clips as clamps to hold the reed in shape while it dries. This process does take some time because you need to wait for the glue to harden between each step before moving on. Once I got back to where the reed started, I cut it off just using scissors. This stuff cuts really easy. Then I set this aside to dry for about an hour. Next, I'm gonna create the cross section you see in the middle of, of the tobacco baskets. Usually they look like a diamond pattern. Now I should have done this a little bit different and I'll explain that, but I cut four strips to the length I wanted that section to be. Then when I went to attach them, this is what I should have done different. I was forcing the end of the reed to sit flat with the edge of the basket, which caused the reed to twist a little bit. I should have laid the, I should have let the reed lay flat and then cut an angle on the end of it. I hope that makes sense. Here's an image I found on Pinterest that shows what I mean. But I got all four pieces on and then glued the cross sections together and set this aside for another hour to dry. Now I can add the woven section. For this, I glued the end of the reed to the top of the basket and then cut where it was needed. I didn't wanna cut all the pieces at once and some end up being too long or too short. This way there was no waste and each piece fit perfectly. I did five strips going each direction, and when I got to the weave portion, I did cut down the first piece, but for the rest, I wove it through the existing pieces, glued down the end, and then it cut the opposite end. I think that's the better way to do this, but you certainly could cut the strips down if you wanna work with a smaller piece. You also wanna make sure to alternate the pieces, so if the first one's starting going over, the next should start under. And don't weave the reed through the diamond section we created first. I let this section dry for another hour and then cut off any of the pieces that were sticking up higher than the rim of the basket. I started with my scissors, but I did go back in with my box cutter, which made it look much cleaner. Now to clean up the edges where all the strips are glued down, I wrapped the side with another layer of the reed. And then I tacked the center diamond section down to the woven part of the basket because that was starting to stick up a little bit. Next, I sanded down the edges since there's a lot of little frayed bits and was debating staining the basket or leaving it as is. Most tobacco baskets I've seen are a darker wood, so I did end up staining it with my Valspar antiquing glaze. You can find this at Lowe's, and I used a paintbrush and watered it down so it wasn't too dark and got into all those cracks a little easier. That's it for this basket. It is not perfect. I don't love the center design on this one, but it looks pretty good for my first ever basket.
for this project, I'm using a different kind of reed. This is also from Amazon and is much thinner. It reminds me more of edge banding than reed like I used for the basket. But anyways, I cut down four pieces at 34 inches each. Then I'm grabbing a thin wood circle. You can find these at any craft store and I'm gonna attach the reed pieces to the circle. I used my staple gun to do this, knowing that the staples would go through that thin wood. So I put a piece of wood under the circle and held the piece being stapled over the edge a little bit. That way I didn't staple it to my craft table or into that wood block. And to push the staple edges down, I just used my hammer and they bent down super easily. Next, I'm taking the opposite end and stapled it down to the opposite side of the circle and repeated this process with all four pieces of reed, spacing them out evenly. After I had all the pieces attached to the circle, I glued the top together so it would stay in place using super glue and then stained everything in special walnut. So this is gonna be a hanging lantern and I found this plastic chain at Dollar Tree as part of their Halloween decor. To make it look a little more high-end though and less plastic, I took my antique wax and covered the rings with it. You could also use the garden chains from Dollar Tree for a bit of a more subtle look. You can see how the right side looks so much nicer. Since all the parts are very lightweight and kind of flimsy, I didn't want to set a candle directly onto the wood round. So I had this glass lantern lying around. You'll see how I attach it in a minute, but first I want to age it to match the rest of this project. This time I'm using my DIY dark wax to go over all of the gold. I even went around the edges of the glass for a more vintage look. Now you wanna leave the wax on just like this and allow it to dry. Otherwise it will wipe right off if you try to touch it. When the waxes were all dry, I'm attaching everything and I used a metal binder ring painted in black and the antique Waverly wax. This was the best thing I could come up with. So the reed didn't just snap from the weight of the candle. So I put the ring around the reed center and through the handle of the glass lantern, and then attach the plastic chain to it as well. Now all the weight is on that binder ring, and I think this looks so good, and it was so easy to make. So this next project, I ended up having to take apart and recreate it, but I always like to share my fails with you guys, and I had quite a few on this one. I started out with 10 of these four by six Dollar Tree picture frames and removed the backing and those little tabs that hold the backer down. Now notice I'm using black picture frames here. That'll be relevant later on and is mistake number one. Next I hot glued the glass down onto the frame, but we all know glass and hot glue are not friends. So there's mistake number two. I repeated that process for all 10 frames and then started gluing the frames together. I'm making a terrarium here. So this is one of the sides. And I made four sets like this with the frames glued long sides together still using my hot glue here, and then built the terrarium. So the two frame sections were the front and the back, and then I used a single frame on the ends. So we built a rectangle box. and there are two more two frame sections for the roof. I glued those on at an angle so this looks like a little house.
I added some dowels into the gap for more stability. I didn't want the roof to come crashing down and breaking that glass. Okay, so here's where it all fell apart. A few months ago, I made a project using this thin reed and someone had commented that it was faux reed and not real. I had no idea what was meant by that comment at the time until I wanted to make it more pliable and decided to put the reed in water to soften it. This stuff just curled and twisted and it was completely ruined. So I did some research and that's when I realized I was not using the reed I thought I was using. Here you can see the comparison between the two, the left being the faux reed, and the back of this one does not look like wood, where the real reed is fully wood front and back, and is much thicker. So if you're like me and didn't realize there was a difference, now you know, but I was using the reed to cover the picture frames, and the thin stuff worked well for that. Even if you don't recreate this exact project, some of these tips could help you with other projects and making sure you don't make some of the same mistakes. I started gluing the reed down right on top of the black parts of the frame, and it wasn't until I was almost done gluing the reed I realized how much that black sticks out on the inside since that was not covered. I did not love how this was looking, so I grabbed some tan paint I have to start covering it up, this was not going well though, because you could still see the black under the glass of the frames, and I was just getting really frustrated. I had spent hours building this and then painting it, trying to make it look decent, but it just wasn't looking good. So I went back to the Dollar Tree and grabbed 10 new frames and painted them before building the terrarium all over again. This time though, I used my super glue to attach the glass to the frames for a more secure hold, and I also used the super glue and hot glue to put the terrarium together. And last I added the thin faux reed back onto the front and it turned out much better the second time. <laughs> 